Welcome to our special segment, Rising Stars. Joining us today, Anupam Mittal, founder, chairman and managing director at the People Group, which holds uh, popular websites like Shadi.com, Makan.com and Moj Mobile. Anupam is also an active angel investor with holdings in over 50 companies. Anupam, thanks so much for joining us today. Pleasure having you on the show. A whole basket of investments, uh, Anupam, that, that you have and you've grown from an entrepreneur to an investor as well. You know, so first want to get your take um, as an investor, especially in the current uh, scheme of things when the market is just so hot. How do you go about your selection uh, strategy? Uh, you know, do you look at uh, the idea, the entrepreneur or perhaps the business verticals that you want to be in? Yeah, look, uh, well, it's, I think, you know, uh, I, I firmly believe that this is sort of the decade of entrepreneurship in this country. I think more value will be created in this decade than ever has by entrepreneurs looking to disrupt entire industries, not just businesses. And so, uh, look, my view is pretty straightforward. Uh, I look at potentially large market opportunities, uh, potential to disrupt, uh, you know, existing businesses or create new businesses in large uh, potential markets. And then we go out and look at backing great uh, teams. And I think besides that, the other uh, critical component of, uh, you know, investing, uh, in my view, is timing. So I think when these two, three things come together, which is uh, a potentially large opportunity, a great entrepreneurial team and timing, I think there's a lot of value that can be created given uh, what we are seeing in the last few years and what we expect in the coming uh, uh, few years. Uh, I think it's going to be a very, very interesting phase of uh, entrepreneurship in the country. Anupam, Ola Cabs was one of your most successful uh, investments uh, recently. T uh, you know, tell us a little bit about what worked there because you were one of the first people to identify it even before several other rounds of investors came in. Yeah, but I think, uh, you know, uh, logistics or transport is actually in a very, very interesting space. It's a very large industry. And as we all know, there's a lot of problems that plague this industry. And so there's a lot of efficiency that can be created. Uh, as far as Ola is concerned, I think what uh, really caught uh, our eye or my eye was really the uh, quality of the entrepreneurial team. Bhavish potentially or possibly is one of the best entrepreneurs in the country today. And, uh, and just his determination as well as uh, his ability to uh, really execute is what uh, made us back him. So it's been a great investment, as, as you know, and you know, there's still a long, long way to go as far as this company and this opportunity is concerned. But I feel pretty confident that he's going to build uh, a very, very valuable company uh, from India. Anupam, I'm, I'm going to get to Shadi in just a moment, but also in terms of valuations, uh, you know, a lot of people are, are you know, mind-boggling the, the kind of valuations we're seeing right now and focusing on that. Now, you've actually seen a dot-com bust before as well when you were in the States. Uh, how do you perceive what's happening now? Do you also feel there's a bubble building up or do you feel, as you said, that, that of course these valuations are apt? Um, you know, and how would you hedge your risks at a time like this? Yeah, that's, <laughs> it's always tricky trying to, trying to time the market uh, and, and, you know, it's, it's not, uh, there's no easy answer. So, you know, uh, broadly, let me try to break down uh, your question and see if I can lend some perspective. I think overall, uh, certainly the market's very hot and we are seeing, uh, you know, a lot of valuations uh, getting carried away. But I think, uh, I think that's bound to happen whenever you see uh, you know, a lot of uh, value being created or whenever you see industries, as I said earlier, being uh, disrupted, uh, I think valuations tend to uh, go up. Uh, I think the difference, though, that we are seeing between 2000 and, and uh, the current uh, uh, time frame is really one of uh, actual transactions and actual volume and actual revenue uh, being there versus 2000 when uh, the race was really to get eyeballs and there were very uh, few indicators the real businesses were being built money was chasing eyeballs and valuations were being driven on the back of that today we're seeing uh, that valuations are really being driven by growing revenue and growing transaction volume and that's a very very good sign sure profitability is still in question uh, but uh, you know profitability when it comes to, uh, you know when you have an opportunity to really uh, uh, go after a very large market and uh, you know in industries such as ours where winner takes all it makes sense that profitability take a back seat for some time so i think uh, while valuations continue to be uh, driven up 
Uh, I think some of it is justified. I think the key question becomes uh, whether or not the right companies uh, are being backed or not. And I think that's where the challenge lies, where valuations increase for everyone. Uh, it, it, it's really critical that one is able to separate uh, the good companies from, from the companies that also runs. Uh, in a few years from now, I think whether one is investing in a 5x multiple or a 10x multiple, that becomes less of, of an issue. When you look back, I think uh, the value that is going to be created is going to be disproportionately higher than uh, the money that one is investing uh, currently. And so uh, I think that's sort of uh, what you're seeing when, when we talk about valuations rising. All right, uh, fair enough. Uh, Anupam, Shadi.com. Now, that one of the first players in the field that today has uh, you know, got so many new participants. Uh, how have you evolved? Things are also getting exciting for the company. Uh, you know, you're looking to grow, scouting for acquisitions. So tell us what's new and exciting at the moment. About two or three things have happened. We've obviously been around for a long time as far as Shadi.com is concerned. I think when we first started in the mid to late 90s, there was really very little uh, internet penetration in the country. And so we focused our offerings on the NRIs who had a lot more internet penetration and could actually use their service. And if you look back and if you look at the period between sort of 2001 to 2008, 2009, what one sees is, uh, you know, uh, internet penetration, I think in the 2001, two frame, time frame was probably around 8 or 9 million and that went up to 11 or 12 million by 2008, 2009. I think post that is when we've really started to see internet penetration pick up and today arguably we have over 200 million uh, regular internet users in this country and I think that presents a very, very solid opportunity for somebody like Shadi.com who's been around, who's sort of built the right technology and has uh, a great team to be able to execute from here on and that's kind of what we are doing we are sort of building uh, you know some very uh, robust technology around privacy around security and enabling people to take advantage of this uh, incredible platform that we've built over the years so i think that's the first leg, leg of our strategy is to penetrate deeper into india uh, you know mature the platform further to be able to address some core issues uh, that customers might be facing and because we are very product led whenever we do the right thing as far as the product is concerned we automatically start to see a uh, uh, much uh, more robust uh, conversion funnel and so on so I think that's the uh, part one of our strategy in terms of uh, what we do from here on I think part two is really look at international opportunities and take the learnings that we've built over the years at Shadi.com and see which markets, uh, you know, whether it is Southeast Asia or others, are pretty close to uh, markets uh, like India and then transplant some of our learnings in those markets and potentially over the coming years, uh, you know, build, uh, build, build a business that is beyond uh, the boundaries of India. Uh, you, so that's really what yeah. we are trying to drive towards. Okay, so a clear strategy there. Anubhav, would you be looking at further uh, rounds of funding in order to, uh, you know, make those acquisitions or, or achieve some of those plans or you already uh, sorted when it comes to the funding front? No, ab you know, absolutely. I think funding is a critical piece, uh, you know, uh, for companies such as ours which are in a growth phase. I think... Uh, you know, we've had, we of course have PE investors as well who've uh, sort of been with us for years. And I think the time is right for us to, uh, you know, we are engaged currently with investors to see how we can bring in like-minded people who believe in our vision and who will partner with us for the next uh, phase of our growth, which is the next four or five years. So I think, you know, uh, funding is, is a critical piece, as I said earlier, and, and we are currently in engagements with investors. All right. Anupam, you know, industry dynamics have also changed, of course, since you first started, given that you were the, one of the first players uh, in the space. And now, of course, you have increased competition. You have all these online dating apps uh, as well uh, that are, you know, of course, uh, at some level also competition in a sense. What is the kind of growth trajectory you're looking at, keeping all of this in mind, uh, going ahead now? I think, you know, before I answer that, let me just set the context in terms of what's driving a lot of yeah. these apps now coming on, uh, you know, uh, coming into the ecosystem sure. in India. I think, uh, I think two or three enabling things have happened, right? In the last couple of years, if you look at internet penetration, particularly on the mobile phone, and look, India is 
primarily a mobile first, or I should say mobile only uh, internet uh, ecosystem as opposed to the West. And the last two, three years, we've seen that handsets have become relatively cheaper and data access has become relatively cheaper. And so you're starting to see, uh, you know, a huge uptake in uh, internet adoption in this country. So that becomes the first sort of enabling uh, uh, you know, part of, of, of this uh, ecosystem, if you will. And I think the second uh, aspect uh, of this is that payment systems are finally maturing. So I think until a few years back, we had several challenges with people being able to pay online. I think with prepaid wallets, with credit card, and especially debit card penetration and robustness of some of the payment gateways that exist, I think we're starting to see uh, more and more people willing and able to pay online. So I think these two things combined have led to a lot of people seeing uh, you know, the opportunity for online dating finally emerge in the country. I think there will be an opportunity for uh, for a handful of companies to build businesses here. Uh, we certainly think so, and that's why we've actually gone ahead and invested in an online dating company as well. Uh, so, so we think you know uh, there'll be perhaps a few different segments as we've seen in the West. You've got your sort of casual dating apps, and then you've got your more serious dating apps, and uh, perhaps in India you'll see a similar uh, sort of uh, similar uh, kind of play roll out. And, and at Shadi.com, we certainly want to be uh, looking at all these various segments that are appearing. And if we can't build in every segment, we certainly will choose to invest. Right. Arubam, just before we let you go today, since uh, you know, you're one of the uh, you know, pioneer investors in this entire industry, I want to get uh, some tips or advice from you for some of the younger invest uh, entrepreneurs today. I mean, we've been speaking to entrepreneurs as young as uh, you know, 19 to 22 years of age uh, that have started to receive funding. You know, anything that you'd like to say to them in terms of how to keep their heads, uh, uh, you know, straight uh, as they sort of take on that challenge? <laughs> You know, Abba, I would love to uh, give advice to young entrepreneurs, but frankly, uh, when you look at the entrepreneurs today and they're learning agility, uh, I'm always, uh, you know, very impressed by them. And uh, I think it's us sort of uh, entrepreneurs who've been around for so long who are kind of learning uh, lots from the uh, young entrepreneurs today. Uh, so, uh, so, so really, it uh, it goes both ways, but. But if there's, you know, if there's one sort of takeaway, uh, I think what we've learned over the years and what I've observed over the years is there's always going to be peaks and troughs, and uh, certainly there could be a time in the next uh, couple of years that we see a bit of a trough. But uh, you know, if you look at the history of successful entrepreneurs and companies, I think what one finds is uh, people who stay the course uh, generally sort of do do well. And, uh, and so it's very important to uh, be prepared for a trough. It's very important to uh, you know, ensure that you're able to stay the course when we go through a downturn. And uh, when you come out the other side, I think uh, companies and entrepreneurs will emerge that much more stronger and better. Anupam, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, thanks for taking the time out. It was great to catch up. Uh, lots happening, of course, uh, at the People Group and also getting your take on these uh, exciting times for the industry. Thanks so much for being with us. That's all we could pack into the show uh, this afternoon. Thanks so much for watching. Lots more coming up.